Hi everyone, happy Sunday. So, um, I was going through my Instagram last night and realized I had had a request to show how I color in the Morgan O'Brien books. Um, I, you guys seem to like where I did the how I color in my Camellia Angel Cova books, so I figured let's do this one as well. So there's two different ways I like to color in the Morgan O'Brien books from the way I do have this picture. Actually, it's the same same format. I thought they were two different ones, but they're not. So what I found that I like to do in the Morgan O'Brien books is a marker base and then pastel pencils on top. If you watched my color and chat with Joshua Dunbar's New Wave 80s punk rock pic gamer picture, um, it's a similar setup. Uh, they're quick and easy. The pastel pencils offer a lot of shading without a lot of effort. I'm always looking for efficiency, so um, that one turned out great. And then the picture in particular that I got the request on was the first picture out of the Summer Matchstick Mouse book. I still need to collect the others. I just haven't done it yet, but they are on my list, and I will own them. It's just... <laughs> I'm trying to show some restraint right now, trying to. So I did the first picture in this book, um, got a lot of love on Instagram, and then again, a question asking how I color these pictures. Again, marker base with uh, pastel pencils on top. So that's what we're going to do today, is we're going to color the next picture in this book, with it being Alphabet Color 2022 M&N Month. Morgan O'Brien is a good choice for that. And of course, Match the Mouse. So we're going to do this one. We're going to do the marker base first. Then I'm going to come in with the pastel pencils. Um, I usually use those with Q-tips. Hopefully I have enough for today. I need to run out and get some more. And I'm um, probably going to add some gel pen just with all the flowers and um, maybe just a touch of white gel pen in a couple places I'm seeing. So we'll see how it goes. And Sid's probably gonna come up here and bust up the party. I just heard her little hat cough. She's like, ma'am, I am the party. I don't know what you're talking about. Here she comes. She does not like me coloring she does not like me, <laughs> she does not like me coloring when I'm supposed to be petting her. And so she, she won't just stay on the other desk now. Now she has to come over and plant herself on, and sneeze all over my picture. What is wrong with you? Ma'am. All right, well, I'm going to pause the video and give her some pets. And then um, I could technically color around her, but let's. Let's indulge her, so I'll be right back. All right, now she has, once she had my full attention, she decides she didn't want it anymore. So, <laughs> uh, that that's just how it be with cats, yo. All right, so marker base first. I'm gonna use Copix. I um, did write down the colors I used for the mouse last time for consistency's sake. So. I'm using, I will put all the colors I'm using in the description. One thing I'm doing differently in each picture is I'm going to colors hat a different color. So, last one was orange. I think this time it'll be blue. I hope everyone is having a good weekend. I figured this would be a how I color in and just a mini color and chat because I don't really have a whole lot happening in order, I guess, to feel like I could talk for a full hour. <laughs> so, um, so this is more of, like I said, a mini color and chat and um, 
just to keep you guys updated on some of the different things going on. Ooh, there is some thunder. I'm recording this on Friday, and it is, of course, it's either raining, it's humid and raining, or it's just humid and not raining, and the humidity never leaves. My, so, I have this thing, and I don't know what, like, if there's even a medical term for it, but I have this internal, like, inability, freaking sneezy cat, sneezing on my stuff, probably should have waited for that to dry, I'll just come back and add a layer later, um, but, um, I have like internal temperature issues and there are times where it feels like the arteries and veins in my body are just boiling like they, they get so hot and irritated feeling and I have felt that way all week and I'm not really sure why I didn't think the weather's really made any major changes it might have backed off a bit on the extreme heat but that's really been about it i feel like the humidity and everything stayed about the same and that's usually what triggers these types of symptoms but especially in the afternoons and even well i mean even right now it's like it feels like like i said i just have this heat and i can put my hand on like my chest or my stomach or um it's particularly in the in my uh, torso and like in my stomach and stuff but I mean I can even feel it in my legs and stuff when it's real bad and I can put my hand and physically feel the heat coming off my body like I am literally like a furnace and um, it makes it extra miserable when it's so hot right now because I don't take heat well anyway and this is one of the reasons because even when I've got two or three fans on me because I'm internally cre you know, putting off all this extra heat, it's like I just cannot cool off. I'm alternating between freezing cold and burning up. And it's just, I thought it was because one of my medications ran out and I had to wait a couple days to get a refill. And I thought maybe it was that, and it just after a few days, it, you know, getting the medicine back in my system, it would be fine, but I'm still having trouble. And it is very uncomfortable. I cannot sleep when I'm hot, so you can imagine I am just not sleeping very well right now. Um, I thought that my higher heart rate might have something to do with it because it seemed like at first it got better when um, I started taking the medicine to bring down my heart rate but my heart rate's still lower and it's becoming a problem again so I don't know really the only thing that cuts into it at all is like a high dose of ibuprofen and because I have stomach issues like I really don't need to be taking a lot of ibuprofen that's about the only thing that will knock the inflammation out and like not just a typical two two capsule dose like it's the type they recommend the higher dose that you know you temporarily take for extreme pain or inflammation I try not to take it every day like that, but some days, you know, for three or four days, it's just, I've got to be able to function somewhat, because when I feel that way, I don't want to do anything at all. Like, nothing sounds appealing. Coloring, computer games, <laughs> work definitely doesn't sound appealing. Um, but I consider that a must-have, not a want-to, so... Um, I had to just kind of grin and bear it, but, um, yeah, like I said, I don't know what the technical term is, but I've even had Brent when it's been real bad in my face and my chest is, those are usually the, you know, it's weird. My face and my chest are usually the worst areas for it. However, this week it has been more in my chest and my stomach, and I don't know what shifted 
get to my stomach. So that's a little, that's a little weird. Um, but, uh, so that's been a bit frustrating. I already don't feel good because it's hot and that just, like I said, makes things so much worse. Um, Scamper, Scamper's hanging in there. Still, she's still just not acting quite right. Um, is that him or the ground? It's hard to tell. I think we're going to consider that grass. Um, these, st so she still wasn't eating great. They put her on, uh, some, uh, steroid medication to take every day which I don't like because it'll you know caught it'll wreak havoc on her kidneys but at this point we've got to try to get her eating because she lost almost a pound over the weekend again when she was actually doing a whole lot better in terms of weight so um we've kind of hit a good compromise where she will eat in the She'll eat a little bit in the mornings, and she'll eat, the best time she eats is late in the evening, usually. I can get her to eat one or two types of foods, <laughs> like one in a, like a topper over a certain type of canned food, and that's the only thing I can really get her to eat consistently, other than those little broth topper things, um, by Fancy Feast, and... You know, those are supposed to help encourage them to eat their canned food, but she'll only eat those and not the canned food. So, what are you going to do? That's it's obviously not ideal nutrition for her, but at this point, I just am more worried about her getting calories in than anything else. But, um, I am syringe feeding her Katie usually throughout the day. We'll do two or three sessions. She tolerates it well enough. She does not like it, but she is less, particularly in the last few days, she's, you know, she was hiding a lot at the beginning of the week and just generally acting like she didn't feel well and it was really worrying me. But yesterday she had a good day where she was really out and about. Today it's rainy. She'll probably be upstairs more today, but, um, She gained a few ounces on Wednesday. I really should probably weigh her today. I don't want to. I don't like weighing her because, of course, you know, I don't want to see that scale go down. So, I, we still don't know what's going on. So, she's, like I said, she will only eat one type of food. An occasional bite of one type of dry food when she's got, like, a buffet of dry food right now because... I just want her to eat something. And, um, this, yeah, it's right blue, I guess I wanted. Um, am I sure? Am I sure about this? What's the pale blue? Eh, yeah. trying to decide I don't know if I want the super ah let's just go with this color and um she just doesn't want to seem to eat and there's nothing showing in her blood work that's really there's nothing, you know, she did a physical exam of her. There's nothing we can find that would be contributing to that. And so, I mean, <laughs> you know, partly you think, oh, that's good news. You haven't found anything big. But, I mean, in some ways I would rather know for sure if that's what's causing it. Because she's just still acting so odd about it. So... I don't, I don't know, I don't know what, what colors did I, I know these are for the tail, let's see, 
if I used one for the ear or if I used the rose saffron. So for the tail, I alternate between blush and peach in the Copic. So at this point, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it, if she pulls out of this and she has to stay on the steroids in order to do it, you know, she's probably going to have a little bit shorter of a life because that's going to eventually, like Felix, uh, cause issues with her kidneys. But, I mean, at this point, it's kind of more quality rather than quantity of life at this point. And, um... I, you know, I'm not even sure some days I wonder if she's actually even going to be able to pull out of it. There may be some sort of minuscule cancer going on in her intestines and in her stomach that we just can't see. The vet wants to do an abdominal ultrasound, but um, if we don't do it before then, we will probably do it the first week of September. That's when her follow-up appointment's scheduled. And I assume unless she completely crashes and burns and, you know, knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Um, that is probably the plan. Okay, just making sure. I guess if he doesn't look exactly the same, it's not a big whoop, but... Besides, I'm going to make his belly a little bit different. So in the other picture, his belly doesn't really show all that much. So I just use the light suntan across his body. But I think here I'm going to make it like a powder pink instead. So He's going to have so much color around him with the flowers and stuff that if he is a little bit neutral, that's okay. That's why he wears his sassy hats. He likes a lot of color, but it's too hot to be wearing clothes, so he, he embraces his color through his hats. That's what I like to think. But I don't know. I just, I get this feeling it's probably something, she, she probably doesn't have a ton of, you know, like a lot of time left. And, um, so I'm doing what I can. She's not in any pain as far as I can tell. Um, I try to syringe feed her just enough so that she's not, you know, hungry all the time. Because she's hungry. She shows up like she's hungry and she wants to eat and this and that. It's just she won't eat what you put in front of her. And that's, that's hard. That's one of the hardest parts. I mean... Any animal not wanting to eat is my biggest stressor in the world, hands down. Um, just because I've had to say goodbye to so many cats that, you know, that was what ultimately led to their demise is they just got so sick to the point they couldn't eat. And it just, and the thought of watching her, you know, just slowly starve to death because she can't, she won't eat anything is just, I can't do it. So... She, like I said, she tolerates the syringe feeding well enough. And as long as that helps keep some nutrients in her body, then I can spoil her with other things to try to get her to eat. And she's eating more on her own than she was like a week ago, I guess. So, um, oh, he turned out real cute with that powder pink. So, um, that's good. But... Things are going to be just kind of crazy around here. She's, you know, I'm spoiling her and lavishing attention on her. And, um, but if she gets real sick, you know, I can tell you right now, my coloring and my video production will just disappear. I will probably disappear for a while, especially, you know, if the worst happens. I'm going to have to take a break and I just want to go ahead and warn you guys of that because um, that's just, that will be a given if, um, if, if the worst happens. So I just, I can't, I cannot, that is just one thing I can't do. Um, 
and it'll probably take me, you know, the better part, at least a couple weeks to get to feeling more like I can, which is, you know, when, when things go crazy in my life, it all goes crazy at once. So, so that's what's going on with her. And, um, but, you know, like I said, overall, she's hanging in there. It's still, I'm still really struggling with it, but, you know, it's, I guess it could be worse. I don't know. I don't know how else to put that. Um, as far as job hunt goes, um, I have a couple prospects from my contracting company with the current company I'm with and he was more yellow in the previous picture, but we're just going to go ahead and make him a little more orange this time. Um, I have a few more prospects this time around, uh, it, even with the company that I, uh, currently am contracted with, so we will see. That's all there. Um, I made it to the second round of the position I'm interviewing for, um, that will be happening not this next week, but the week after. And I haven't really done a whole lot of searching other than that. Though, I mean, to be fair with my, my contract company, I've, I've made modifications to my resume. We've been looking at some different things like digital marketing and program, uh, project management and stuff like that. Just where I'm at in my career, it's... There's, there's fortunately a lot of good options out there for me. So, um, I've definitely been putting in some work, but now some of these I may end up going back over with gel pen, um, but we'll see. I think I just want, I think I just want a lot of, a lot of color on the flowers. I thought I had another yellow. There we go. Lost my train of thought. See, this is why it's hard. Like, I very rarely do live as I'm coloring chatting because I get so lost in what I'm trying to say and do here and um, we'll throw in some red actually where's my I'm gonna throw in just a little bit lighter red I wonder if I could grab that over here grabbing Everblend. Add in more of a scarlet color just so I can use my we won't have to go super dark red on some of these so So there, I mean, there's definitely a lot of prospects in that I should have something in September. Um, is this the, no.
whether it's on the 1st of September or a couple weeks in, um, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to having a little bit of a delayed start just to have a little extra time off. Um, but if it, you know, it's one of those things, if it happens, great. If not, I'm not going to be too upset about it. This month's been a little quiet anyway, just because of um, where I work. A lot of people take their vacation during this time. And um, so there's not as much going on. August is usually the slowest month. So... Um, let's see here. Throw in some light blue on some of these flowers. And... So one thing with the pastel pencils that I try to do um, is when I'm putting down the marker layer, I always try to um, use lighter colors, kind of like you would in a, you know, if you were putting, um, well, that doesn't, that's not that far off from the stuff below it. That's a shame. I was hoping it would be a little more, but um, I always try to pick lighter colors and not go super dark because that's what I'm gonna come in with my pencil shading with so um if you're wondering why i kind of am sitting here really contemplating what colors i'm using that's why is because i want to make sure i don't go too dark with my initial layer because then it becomes harder to add um, shading onto that and that's the case if you're using colored pencils if you're using whatever you happen to be using um as the as the layer over it so that's probably similar to that shock pink kind of running out of colorful colors here I'm sure y'all are like use this use this and being through the screen all right give me a second here Go with some orange down here. I will go with some this that's just yellow yellow. Where's my fuchsia? I knew I grabbed did I not grab a fuchsia? I think that hot pink is actually is similar to the fuchsia. Uh that says fuchsia okay that's a little bit a little bit lighter so we'll, we'll go with that you're like they're just little flowers Michelle you don't have to overthink it quite so much and that's true I really don't need to I don't know why my brain why my brain chooses to do this. Almost there. And where is it? We'll throw in the aqua here. I guess theoretically I could have left some of the flowers white. In retrospect. But I 
don't know. I don't think it really needs it. This looks pretty, pretty good to me. So, all right, let me get my markers put back. Let me go grab my pastel pencils and pull what I'm going to be using for this picture. All right, so if you hear any weird noise in the background, it's probably rain because it is pouring rain right now. So, all right, so the picture looks great in of itself. I could add a little bit of gel pen and call it a day. Oh, one thing I did do is I did go ahead and use a white gel pen and add in some little white flowers. Um, just, just to introduce just a little bit of white, I thought this would be a good idea. So, so there we go. And so, um, like I said, look great on its own, but I really like to add um, pastel pencils to jazz it up just because they are easy to blend, easy to add. Um, these are small enough pictures that honestly, I think just shading with pencil probably isn't um, super tedious in of itself either, but I just really like using my pastel pencils. So I have all my Derwent ones um, picked out for the colors I'm gonna use. Again, I will put those in the description. Um, I'm a bit bummed because my mid green, I guess, was just shattered from the get go. So I've pretty much ate up this whole pencil just trying to get some sort of point to it. I did to try to help with that and breakage, pick up a specific sharpener, a Derwent pastel sharpener, which I'll link in the description. I also, the swatches I use is something I'm going to convert all my color pencil swatches to. It's this little ring, binder a uh, little o-ring um, where you can just grab the swatches like this i find this easier to you know put up against the page and and look at the different colors you could even pull them apart and compare side by side if you want to look at combos and stuff so i found an even smaller set for my faber castell pit um pencils so but I think I found everything I needed in my Derwents. And so pretty much all I need is a big brush that I'll probably wash after this. I usually use a glove so I don't pick up the pastel in my hands. But in this case, I'm just going to use a piece of paper and work left to right. And um, those, some Q-tips and the pastel pencils is really all you need to get started on this. So. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the grass. So how I use the pastel pencils is I just kind of scrub in a little bit of a line. I don't worry too much about where there would normally be light and shade. I pretty much just do it in an outline, kind of like I would with a darker marker. Plus this pencil's a little screwy because like I said, I think it's just fully shattered. I'm just going to have to order another one. But, um, you know, with buying whole pencil sets, sometimes you just get pencils that are that tend to break more than others. So... This is such a small area, I'm just creating a very small thin line around the edges because when I blend out with the Q-tips, it just doesn't have real far to go, so I don't have to worry too much about that. I think the greens I got will work just fine with the leaves too. Now the Derwents are a 72 set and the 
pit pastels are a 60 set so um, you don't get a huge wide range of colors though obviously these will lend themselves well to being blendable just because of the types of pencils that they are so So I talked about Scamper, talked about interviews and whatnots. Yeah, I did go ahead and order a couple books for the month. Um, you saw Camelia Angel Kova's newest book came out. I did go ahead and pick that up. Okay, so either blow gently or brush. I do a little bit of both just because I'm obnoxious as a person. <laughs> and um, you can already see there I mean really I don't have to come in too much with the q-tip um, but you can see the difference between this side and this side just right off the bat in terms of just adding a little shading so I just lightly come in with the q-tip and just brush outwards away from where I created that line Like I said, this is pretty quick because I'm not really having to touch it all that much. And I mostly do this just to push it into the paper a little bit more. I do, st I do still spray them with um, fixative when I'm done, but this leads to less coming off the paper. Let's see, like I barely had to touch that. But you can see the difference there. It's one of the reasons I like shading with these is they're very subtle. It's not, um, even when you go with, so the color I used in the Copics was a Nile green and then I used a mid green in the pastels. So um, generally I'll go with a lighter, not a full pastel color, but a light color in marker and then I go with a dark color so that's what the mid green looks like on here and your Nile greens probably somewhere between an emerald green and a fresh green in terms of um, brightness so probably more on the emer emerald green side just a little darker so actually it's probably closer to the shamrock up here so all right so I've done that. Let's look at the hat. All right. So, oops. So I'm gonna do the same thing with a hat. I could have went with indigo or the Prussian blue, but again, I wanted it to be a little more subtle, so I went with the cobalt blue instead, which gives just a very slight difference in the shade tone. Under big areas there would be some shadow. I am making the line a little thicker. Like right under the brim, not brim, the top of the hat right here. Round the brim of the hat. I'm also going pretty heavy on it. And then I'm just going to use the other side of the Q-tip I was using for the grass. And just come in and just touch it. Just barely touch it. And just kind of rub it around. There you go. And let's see. <laughs> Start to use my thing here. I 
this time, before I brush it away, I'm going to add rub over it with the Q-tip first. And let's see. I see this color you really can't. I should have picked a darker. Probably magenta or something would have worked better for that, but that's okay. They ain't all got to be perfectly shaded. All right. Now for the shock pink, I actually picked a lavender just because I thought it would complement it well instead of picking like a dark pink or magenta kind of color I thought it would give me a little brighter look now there you are So sometimes you can play around with some different colors if you don't really just want an absolute dark result. Sometimes you can just use a different color. I find that shading with so like instead of there's only one um like cobalt turquoise color in the aqua range so instead i go with a forest green which has a blue green shade to it in the um in this pencil set so Sometimes, and I haven't really tried it too much, you could shade with the complementary color on the color wheel. So, if you have a blue, a light blue, maybe try shading with a really dark, like, rusty orange. I think orange is the opposite of blue. So, like, with red, I know a dark green can actually complement it pretty well. Um... So, just a few ideas. That is one I want to try myself. I just haven't had a chance to yet. And had I thought about it for this picture, I would have done it. I don't even think you're really going to see this red that much. I would have been better with a green or a gray, but that's okay. I think on some of these I'm going to make the little things white and then come in with some of my gel pens anyway so it'll all kind of, it'll all work out. Let's see, yellow, I grabbed the marigold. I went ahead and grabbed a red for the orange shading just as I knew I didn't really have an orange dark enough to set off the orange color. Side seems to be shaping up. Let me grab the emerald green for these little leaves. And then we'll move on to the mouse. Alright. So like I said, I'm coming here with a little bit of gel pen. A bit of white and glitter gel pen and I think this will be once we add the rest for our pastel this will be just about done so 
overall, it, because I'm going a little slower because of the video, um, this will take maybe about an hour. I would say that's probably pretty typical of these types of pages for me. If I just did the marker, maybe half an hour. But since I like adding the little pencil touches and the gel pen touches and stuff like that. Um, they take a little bit longer, but I don't mind that. Yeah, I do really enjoy these books. I can't wait to get the rest of them. I will probably wind up getting the rest of them when autumn comes around. Um, just because then I'll have the ones for autumn, Halloween, and Christmas. So I'm guessing either September or October I will probably depending on my fi my financial situation I will go ahead and pick up the other ones but right now I'm really enjoying just coloring in the summer ones so now if I end up getting a little bit of the pastel onto an area I don't want it on I grab a my mono zero eraser by Tombow and I uh, just go in and just clean up. It's like that gar dark green rubbed in. Some of this is marker, but that dark green rubbed in a little bit on some of the flowers there. I didn't particularly want that. So the mono eraser is really good for the little details like that. So. All right. Now, some of the pencils I found give me a little trouble with blending. This, not the cat, normally the cadmium red, but um, the uh, tomato red gives me some trouble. The Prussian blue. I ordered new pencils just to make sure it wasn't the pencils, and I don't think it is. I think it's just the maybe the particular formulation of those um, types of colors make it harder to get a true pastel uh, that will blend like you would expect. That, that may just simply be the issue. Though I will say I haven't run into that issue yet with the pit pastels. Now, if you want to reuse your Q-tips, you can always take your scratch piece of paper and just rub them on there to clear them off a little. Um, which is probably what I should be doing since I have a limited number of Q-tips. However, I am lazy. And then the other side, we'll just, like I said, I'm using teeny tiny amounts of pastel. Probably in the grand scheme of things, it's not super noticeable, but it's still, um, still cute. And again, if I feel like maybe there needs to be a little less pastel in areas, like I feel like I was really, there's such small spaces over here that I ended up, I could come in with a little eraser. This is stuff that's probably not even noticeable to most people, but just to me. So, <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, now time for the mouse. So I did write down the colors I used for him on the previous page, which was super smart of me. <laughs> that was really, really smart of me. I used terracotta for, of course I have to pick, I had to pick out a new color for his belly. I 
but I used terracotta for his feet. The darker pink areas on his tail and his ears. And his nose. Is it the darker pink? Yes. Since I have a wider area to cover with his ears, I'm being a little thicker with my layer. Now, the reason I don't have the Stabilos, um, and I've mentioned this before, is I get the pencils that have the, a, I think it's the AP certified symbol on the back, and that just means that they're confirmed not to have any, like, cancer-causing agents or anything like that in the pastel. Um, I don't think it's probably even an issue for the Stabilos, but they do not have that uh, label and because I tend to be messy and I'll gently blow on the pastel to move it around on my desk um, I'll have pencil dust and if it were me just for me I wouldn't worry about it but um, with all the cats that I have I just don't want to take any any chances basically so um, I'd love to have the Stabilos one day and maybe over time, I'm trying this pink this time. I think I used the burnt ochre last time. And I think I like that option better. <sighs> Actually. Yeah. The pink doesn't sit on there as well as the burnt ochre did. I kind of liked the brown pink look as opposed to pink pink. If... If that makes any sense. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? There we go. Make it a little darker. Yeah, see, I know I just looked up on the camera and I'm like, it's a lot more noticeable to me looking at it than you can actually see on the camera. But you know, that's okay. Because, like I said, sometimes you just want to color a certain way for yourself and you enjoy it even if nobody else can really see what you're doing now you should be able to see this one pretty good though I'm using brown earth over light suntan for Mr. Mouse Just going around the edges again, and then go over the lines on them, just to help kind of create that fur texture a little bit. I have been more in the mood for these types of pictures this month, so, um, I mean, really and truly, I don't even really need to use the Q-tip here on his body, though I still probably will just around the edges, but like where his fur's at and stuff, I'm pretty happy with the pastel pencil creating a little bit of a texture there that's where I see people use pastels a lot is in a portrait um, pictures and um, like I'm talking art pieces like uh, for animals and people and stuff that's where a lot I it, it just amazes me I'll sit there and watch and they start out you know with some blobs of pan pastel and, you know, next thing you know, they've got 
just these amazing pictures, realistic looking drawings with uh, with all kinds of fur and everything and I just, I don't know, I find it fascinating. One of these days I'd really like to be able to use my pastel pencils more to create fur textures. I actually have a Mariola Boudic picture of a cat that I just found this morning that probably would be a good one to try. So, just coming in here and erasing a little bit of the pastel that smudged onto the lighter area. Like I said, the mono eraser is real good for that. Alright, so now we're going to try... try just a little we're going to try just a little of the pastel pink and I'm going to see how I like it actually and this is one of the really cool things I like another really cool thing I like about the pastel pencil one side we're going to try the pink and one side we're going to try the terracotta is that what I want no no I wanted the brown ochre whoops Okay, well, we'll try the brown ochre down here. So pastels are great for when you want to test because if you don't like the result, they are so very easy to erase. So much easier for me than pencil, but a lot of that is because I use very heavy, very heavy handed when it comes to my pencils. Okay, let's see here. You're like, oh, I can't tell the difference. And I'm sitting here looking. Hmm. I don't know. That is a very tough call. Kind of want to go with pink because he's facing the sun and, you know, he's getting a little color on him and thus he would be getting the pink, but the thing is the pink is not very easy to see so I don't know maybe we do one and then the other I can't see the ochre so that is probably a no so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna do a very light terracotta And then I'm going to come in with a very light line, maybe not a not so light line of the of the pink color. And I'm going to blend them together. And I think that will work nicely. Sometimes you just have to change what you're doing right in the middle. And that's okay. Because in the, like I said, the pastel pencils are very forgiving um, in terms of raceability. If you put something down and you just flat out don't like it, they're very easy to erase. And even the red ones, some of the darker colored pigments aren't as um they don't leave stains like colored pencils do so there you go oh that see that transfers very well to the camera y'all actually see it better than i do back over his 
eyes because they're dulled, the line art's dulled a little bit now. I might go back over it with a pit pen, but I think everything else is looking pretty smashing. Great, 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 great. Just real light touch. Like I said, mostly just to push the pastel into the paper a little bit. And this actually dulled that enough that I don't need to do that. So, there you go. Very cool. Alright, so our Mousy is done. And let me... Where are we at? We're at a minute. So let me do the broom because I do want to show that. And once I, I think, which one is it I'm using? Burnt ochre? No, it has to be the terracotta. I'm going to show the broom, then we'll speed up the rest of the pastel. Actually, should, actually, I'm not even going to speed it up. We'll just, uh, I'll finish the rest of it off camera and then we'll move to adding all the fun uh, gel pen stuff at the very end since we're already at an hour here. I'm coming in with the emerald here. I wanted, instead of the using a dark green like Ionian green or the mid-green tone that I'm using for the back, for the grass, I wanted something bright and poppy for the broom. So, I decided to go with the emerald green which is still pretty noticeable from the yellow green I used as a base. So, like I said, the fun part about the pastels is always a good opportunity to try some new stuff and some different ways of putting the colors together because they are so easily erasable if you don't like what you got. And if you like some shading but you just don't want super dark, obvious shading, I think they work really well for that too. So, Alright, I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera and then we'll show you a little bit of the gel pen and then we'll be done. All right, so now we are going to add in some gel pen and a little bit of glitter gel pen, a little bit of um, white gel pen, and I think we will be good. So one thing I do like to do is, um, and I've mentioned this before, is I like to go over outlines with gel pens. So for instance, this pink flower here, I'm actually going over the line art. Now, I guess this ties into the whole subtle look of my pictures that I like, is that it's not super noticeable, but it just, it, it, it changes the line art just enough to make it more in line with the color. So like, look at that one now compared to this one. It looks I think a little bit nicer, a little bit closer to a dark pink as opposed to a black outline. And then, of course, when you move the page, you get the surprise, surprise glitter. Glitterific. So, I'm going to do this one too. It's one of those things that's a little time consuming for me, but when the whole picture's done and the, I even will do the middle like that. So, 
when the whole picture's done like that, it just looks it's, mm, so nice. So nice. I changed my mind on this one. I wanted the white middle on that one too. We'll add one some to that red there. Actually, I am going to make the now see this is where I have to be careful because Michelle likes to put her grubby hand right in the gel pen while it's still wet. Yeah. I don't like that as much as I thought I would. Let's straighten it out a little bit. Eh, that's better. I would have been better served just leaving those pink. Actually, once it dries, I may go over it with a glitter gel pen and just call it a day. I think that's what we're going to do. All right, let me grab the red before I go mucking up anything else. Actually, I would have been better served with the darker orange on this. Oh, maybe that is the darker orange. Oh, uh, yeah. I wish the Arteza glitter gel pens came with color names on the pens. Because sometimes it's hard for me to tell which ones are the darks and the lights until I actually put them down on the paper. grab a purple. See, now it's getting to the point where very easily stick my hand in something and smear it. I thought I would add in some little, a few more little like white dots and stuff, but I don't know. After that one flower, I'm not feeling super confident in my abilities on it today. Alright, let's grab the yellow. Uh, the yellow is not going to be super obvious. Actually, I think I'm just going to fill in the flowers with the yellow. I did want to do that with a few of them. I 
actually, is this what I'm looking for? Yes. I think I'm actually going to outline the hat. I did change the, whoops, I did change my lighting just a little bit to a more yellow, pinkish, I think it shows the shading a bit more now that I've done that, so. I think I'm just going to fill in these flowers down here, I'm going to fill in this one too. I think that's all the blue. Now we need the blue green. I love that I have so I I really like my dual metallic Devickle pens, but one of the biggest reasons the Artezas are now my favorite is because they have so many more color choices. The only thing I wish they had was a clear glitter gel pen that went with it. They've got one that's more of like a metallic silver. But I wish, I really wish they had a clear one that would take care of all my other colors. And it would just be so nice. If only. Alright, so we're going to go back over. Yeah, I still don't feel. I still don't feel great about that white gel pen. So we're going to go back over it with the pink. Now that it's dry, of course. There. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a neat, uh, that's a neat little thing there. So, all right. Let me finally get some green for the leaves on the broom. I was going to go with a light green, but I feel like that would wash out. So we're going to go with the darker green. Again, I was thinking of using white highlights, but for this picture, I don't. I've been trying to use more white highlights in my Camellia Angel Cova pictures, and I think those are coming out nice, but I just don't think this picture really needs it. I added in some white flowers and that gave me a little bit more white in the overall picture, but I think that's all it needs. I don't think we need a bunch of white highlights in these types of pictures. I think they stand well on their own. And there we go. He is all done and looking fabulous, and I am jealous. I would like to take a nap, though I don't know if I really want to take a nap on the grass because of, like, bugs. You know, it'd be pretty all around all those flowers, but I can imagine, like, just bees, and which a bug's his friend. So, I mean, he, he probably gets along with them better than I do, personally. But, um, uh, yeah, so that is pretty much it. Just 
a layer marker, some real subtle pastel pencil shading. Just trying to see if I could show it in a few different lights. And then outlining a lot in gel pen and just adding little gel pen accents to where you can tell a little bit of difference, particularly where I use that dark gel pen there. I think it sets off nicely with the bright leaves. Um, it just, I don't know, it makes the line art look a little nicer to me. And then again, when you move it, you get some nice little sh kind of subtle shine. It's all about subtle shading around here, I guess, with these pictures. So if you just want to see for comparison. Now, I didn't do as much gel pen outlining in this one, as you can see, but um, I... I I think I wasn't doing that as much when I first did this picture, but everything else is pretty much the same. Just there wasn't any, actually, there's like one little bit of gel pen in this one. So this one has a lot more. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, any of the pictures that I do a certain way. I, I mean, I'm starting to get in the groove on certain books. Anytime you want to see how I color a particular picture, um, or a particular artist or anything like that, just let me know. Um, I actually really enjoy doing these. It's a little bit different than my demos and a little bit different than my coloring chats, so it gives me another kind of variety of video. And so I hope you guys have a good rest of the weekend, and yeah, let's hope that this upcoming week things will be going, um, things will go pretty well. <laughs> and um, I won't have my interview till the following week, but um, I'm definitely going to be using some time this week to get prepped. And I'm talking to you guys while I'm putting my pencils up if I sound halfway distracted. So probably shouldn't be doing that. But anyway, uh, thanks guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and you'll see this on Instagram today. Bye for now.